Hi guys, I'm back to make another anime review and today we're going to be looking at Lucky Star and I'd like to thank Platts for the request to review it. I will say from the get-go, I just powered through the whole series in like the last two days and it's not, since for me anyways, because it doesn't have like an overarching kind of like theme, it's hard to like power through like all the episodes. There's 24 plus an OVA and it's a really good show. But I've realized now that I'm getting older that this show suited me a lot more when I watched it the first time back like when I was in high school in like 2007, 2008, when I first watched it, it fit, like I got the humor a lot more. I can still kind of like nostalgically like pick it up, but the whole anime is basically just, it's pretty realistic in showing how like high school interactions work between you and your friends, even though like my main friend group was more of like the, everybody was like a Konoda. Or Konata, I don't know how you say your name, even though I just listened to it for like 24 episodes in a row. Konata, Konata, that's what we're going to go with. But uh, yeah, so like my whole friend group was like that. But you also had friends in your classes or people you knew in your classes that fit the other characters' groups. And the show does a really good job of showing like how each character perceives like a situation or whatever topic was brought up from something as mundane as a f mosquito swatting it or not swatting it how to eat certain things like it's just like it shows how in high school that you could you get so bored honestly that you and your friends just talk about anything you'll just like look any kind of like issue or situation or anything that you couldn't think of you guys talk about it and then everybody will have like their own little opinion on it or everybody will agree on it and that's shown in the show too, and I thought that was really well done. The only character that I can relate to now that I'm getting older, like directly relate to, is like Kuroi Sensei. Uh, I guess that's how you say her name. But <laughs> she's like the same exact age as me, and she like her sad life is just like I'm like I, I feel this, I feel this on an emotional level because she just like doesn't go out. She kind of stays at home, plays her video games, and. Another thing they do really well is Konata's friends with her on uh, an MMO. And if you have like a friend on, like you're a friend with like a boss or something like that, and you're on the game when you're not supposed to be, and they're like, oh, did you get this, this, and this done? Yeah, <laughs> that feeling is shown very well between the interactions between Konata and Kuroi. It's like, don't bring up real life stuff. This is video game land. I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, decompressing right now. So. Yeah, it's a good, it's one of my, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites. I, I haven't rewatched it. But it was one of the high school animes that I first saw that actually, like, dealt with high school <laughs> like it's an actual high school instead of there being some, like, extenuating circumstances or it being romance-filled. There's not much romance in this show at all besides uh, Konata's little cousin and maybe... Miyuki's little cousin. So those two kind of have like a remote, uh, emotional relationship. And I think that was kind of shown to show the Fujiyoshi friend side or whatever. And this was, if this was one of the first animes you watched, this kind of keyed you in on a lot of like Japanese sayings and animes. Like Moe, I didn't know what that was when I was younger and I was first watching anime. Fujiyoshi didn't know what that was. Otaku. It like does a lot of in-depth and not even in-depth, but pretty general analysis of like how otaku culture is in Japan and how they actually live their lives through Konota kind of. It's nothing too in-depth. It's not like Genshin in-depth where it like goes into like the whole show is about that, but it does show it through Konota and like her dragging her friends along with her to go to things. And that's another thing from high school is like, your friends might want to do something you might not necessarily want to do it or you're not interested in it, but you do it anyways. But yeah, that's it. the show does this, like, shows the high school kind of thing very well. And there's tons of parodies for, like, the older generation anime watcher, like my group, like Harui Suzumiya, Initial D, Fist of the North Star. And, like, even the ending song changes to, like, different anime and, uh, endings and openings, like, Hedgehala from Dragon Ball Z and all kinds of things like there's so many references which keeps it super interesting also I didn't notice it before 
but the show is pretty self-aware that it is a show. This is shown in the Lucky Corner a lot, which is like the ending segment show within a show kind of thing that talks about it being a show. And then showception, I guess. And what else did they do? <laughs> the freaking side characters, like the characters that like have one appearance or like they're not recurring, all are done by like the same dude. All the voices are, and they sound like they're from the same dude. It's either the sa all the same dude, or there's like same dude and same female. But I think it's a dude doing the female, the same dude doing the female voices as well. I didn't notice this when I was younger because I wasn't paying that much attention. This is one of those shows that's like super happy go lucky and like light hearted that you can like watch it and not like have to pay like in depth attention. You're not gonna miss anything because they're all just talking about different topics. And it's super lighthearted. It's nothing that, like I said, this wasn't a show I'd binge watch usually, but it's a show you can like pick up when you have nothing else to watch and just like watch a few episodes. Because it's not, and it's pretty funny. Like, a lot of the situations are pretty funny. There's some really good parts in it. The Lucky Corner is so good. <laughs> like, I like that during the second season, they start showing the live-action voice actors for the Lucky Corner and other characters in the show. And they're doing their singing. And they sing really well, surprisingly. Yeah, it, that was pretty cool. I like how that starts tying in as the series goes on to a second season. I think the OVA was my favorite episode, to be honest, even though it doesn't have, like, the realistic feel that most of the other episodes do because it's a little bit more fantasy-based. But it was... I, I think the fantasy aspects added to it, and I liked how they showed the actual MMO world and then playing it all together. I thought that was cool. <laughs> and all the characters stay in their trope. There's no characters that evolve outside of their trope. They stay in their trope. They don't change. Like, Tsukasa is always the, like, airheaded one, even though she, can, she sometimes knows things that nobody else does. Miyuki's the smart one that knows everything. Konata's the otaku. And then Kagami's kind of, she's kind of like the normal-ish one that wants romance, but will never find it because she's on this, this show, Lucky Star, and there's no real relationship stuff outside of the Yuri-ish romance kind of thing. And I don't even know if I'd consider that romance. It's not too much. It's not outright. It's just like a really nice friendship, kind of. Yeah, I really enjoyed the show. Rewatching it was really nice, even though I would not binge watch it again, to be honest. But it's something you can pick up just randomly, and it's fun to watch. Also, Lucky Star has like one of the most like one of the most recognizable like opening songs ever. It's almost an, it's almost used in like every AMV. It's like Harui Suzumiya ending level like hype. And it's one of those ones that still like sounds really good. Like rewatching it, I still didn't skip any of the openings. And this time I didn't skip the endings. I mean when I first watched it, I skipped the endings because I've never been a big ending guy. And I kinda wanted to clarify like this wasn't my first anime, but it was like one of the first anim animes that I found online. So it was like my first like searching for anime outside of what came on TV on like Toonami and Adult Swim and whatnot. But thanks for watching as always. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this anime review. Bye! -bye.